Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for having me, and hello, members of the committee. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Leonella Felix, and I'm a state representative for District 61. So this enabling legislation would allow municipalities to, uh, should they choose to, allow 16 and 17 year olds uh, to vote in school board elections only. And I wanna just be clear that this would be enabling legislation, not mandating them to vote in school committees. The aim is to empower young people by giving them a voice in decisions that directly affect their education and, and school environment. It also recognizes that students are key uh, stakeholders in education and should have a say in who represents their interest in the school board. For background, the genesis of this legislation comes from student or students organizing a, against a 2023 proposed policy by the Smithfield School Committee that would have mandating outing trans students to their parents. Over 100 people, including students, showed up to the, in opposition to the legislation, or to the proposal, rather. Uh, the students wanted to have a greater voice in the decision and be at the table when these decisions would be made and hold them accountable for the policies, the discriminatory, discriminatory excuse me, policies that were trying to be implemented. And now more than ever, young people want their voices heard in their school curriculum and in many other decisions that the school board makes. So there are many other municipalities that have actually allowed these types of legislation or similar legislation. So Newark, New Jersey, who their largest school district um, implemented this in January of 2024. Five cities in Maryland have done the same, two cities in California as well. So to address some of the concerns I've heard related to this bill, particularly as it relates to maturity, I'll note that research has consistently found that while teenagers may be less mature, that in the areas of high cognition, like responding quickly and emotionally in heightened circumstances, they perform similarly to adults in areas of cold, cold cognition, which are longer term, more deliberate decisions. Another concern that I've heard is allowing young voters to vote in school elections will disrupt the electoral process, and that's not necessarily true, so long as proper measures can be implemented to ensure the inclusion of young of youth in school committee elections is seamless and effective. So what a lot of municipalities have done or cities have done is that they've enacted policies and procedures to make sure they educate the youth prior to the voting, kind of like what, what we do when we go out and vote when we out uh, and communicate with our voters, they establish procedures and safeguards to enable the youth to be able to vote in their school committees. So again, this would be enabling legislation. Nothing in this legislation would actually mandate that the, school, that the municipalities allow this. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions from members of the committee? Yes, Representative Corvesi. You knew I was not going to let this opportunity. Oh, I know. And I realized that part of that speech was just for me. I don't buy it. I know. I don't buy it. I don't buy that the same individuals who would support allowing teenage and young adult murderers to either get out of jail or have a reduced sentence because of their inability to understand what they did, but you want 16 year olds to vote in elections. I'm sorry. To the chair, if I may? Sure. That's why I specifically cited research in terms of the hot cognitive and cold, because those two are very different. We are talking about deliberately and through period of time allowing youth to be able to do their research, to come out and testify, which according to the research shows, and I'm happy to send it to you your way, according to the research shows that they do actually just as we do in adults. It's the hot cognition that makes it difficult. It's when you have impulsivity at the table that creates that difference. And that is why when we talk about criminal legal reform, we say we talk about the impetus of letting them out eventually when they serve their time, right? Understanding the co their cognitive abilities, again, with si the situations. Because they're not the same. You're not thinking they're deliberating, oh, maybe I should go rob this store, right? It's more of an impulse. And that's in those capacity, yes, they're less, less likely. Um, they uh, perform less in terms of, of being able to, um, to uh, rationalize and doing that. So that's why we, when we talk about these two are not really, they're not really the same. The alleged research aside, I still don't buy it. <laughs> and I don't think the public in Rhode Island would either. 
I, I think that no matter the, how many research I bring you, I know that you will never buy a duck, so, and I respect that. But I believe that the youth and a lot of the, the, the students that are out there will, and I think you'll hear from a lot of the students in terms of the advocacy and the need for, for this proposal. So thank you so much. Any other questions? Yes, Rep.